Greetings and welcome to yet another video. Today we will learn Babcock and Wilcox boiler. In 1867, Stephen Wilcox and George Herman Babcock patented the Babcock and Wilcox boiler, which used water tubes to generate steam more safely than fire tube boilers. The boiler generated high pressure steam more safely and it was more efficient. Originally, the Babcock and Wilcox Company is an American renewable environmental and thermal energy technologies and service provider and has operations in many international markets across the world. Babcock and Wilcox boiler is classified as a horizontal drum axis, natural draft, natural circulation, multi-tubular, stationary, high pressure, solid fuel, externally fired water tube boiler. Although it is a stationary boiler, it may also be designed for marine purpose. Now we'll discuss the main parts of the Babcock and Wilcox boiler. This boiler is used to produce high pressure steam in ships and for the production of electricity. All the parts except the furnace are hung by means of metallic strap or belt supported on the pillars. So, Steam and water drum. This is one of the important part of the Babcock and Wilcox boiler. It is a horizontal axis drum containing water and steam. About half of the drum should be occupied by steam. Below the drum, there is a short tube connected to the uptake header. This is the short tube connected to the uptake header and this is also called the riser and this is the long tube which connects the steam drum and the downtake header. Now the water tubes. Both the left header and the right header uh, or you can say the uptake header and downtake headers are connected by some tubes. These are the tubes inclined at an angle of about 15 degree to the horizontal through which water passes and changes into steam. These tubes connect the uptake header to the downtake header. The inclination of the tubes helps separation of steam and water and for the establishment of the convective current that we will discuss in details later. Now down deck header, this is placed at the chimney end. This is the chimney end of the boiler. So this is the down deck header. This header joins the water tubes to the bottom of the drum. It collects the water from the drum and flows towards the other end through, through the water tubes. The water comes down through this downtake header and this water flows in this direction. Now the left side is the uptake header. It is present at the front end of the furnace. So this is the furnace end. And it is attached to the bottom of the drum. It transmits the steam from water tubes to the drum. So the steam produced goes to the drum through the small short tubes and this is called the riser. Now baffle plates are the obstruction to the flow of combustion gas. It causes hot gas to move upwards and downward 
in a zigzag way before entering into the chimney. So baffle plates are provided to deflect hot flue gases. The water tubes can absorb more heat due to the retention of the hot gases in its flow path. So hot gases from furnace goes like this and it comes down this way and again goes up and it will ultimately enter into the smoke box and is discharged through the chimney. And due to the presence of this baffle and this baffle, in this case there are two baffles, because of these baffles which are basically the obstruction, the hot gas can go up and down. That means it moves in a zigzag way. That is why the tubes can absorb maximum heat and this way rate of production of steam increases or maximum heat can be absorbed that means the efficiency of the boiler increases. Now the fire door. Fire door it is used for feeding the fuel to the grate of the furnace to burn solid fuel in the furnace. So this is the furnace area and the solid fuel can be fed through this and it is placed over the grate. Now furnace and grate I, I have already uh, mentioned. Grate is the platform for burning the solid fuel. The opening of the grate is essential for settling the bottom ash on the ash pit below the grate. So this is the grate and below it there is the ash pit where the bottom ash is collected to be removed from time to time. The furnace is placed under the uptake header where the fuel is burned. So this one is uptake header and just under this uptake header the furnace is situated and the hot gases passes like this. Mud box. Mud box is generally provided with the downtake header. So at the bottom part of the downtake header there is one mud box. It is not shown in this diagram. The mud is settled down in this mud box and it is removed by opening the blow of cock periodically. Then damper. A damper regulates the flow of the smokes from the boiler to the chimney through the smoke box. The dampers are operated by a chain that passes over the pulley to regulate the drop. It therefore regulates the combustion of the fuel by controlling the entry of the air into the furnace. Damper is situated somewhere over here which regulate the flow of hot gases to the smoke box and up ultimately to the chimney. So if the flow of hot gases from the boiler to the smoke box and chimney is controlled, that way the flow of air into the furnace is controlled. So the rate of combustion of fuel can be controlled by opening, closing or half opening, half closing the damper. So it is basically the regulator which regulates the rate of flow of fresh air inside the furnace. Then all mountings, definitely the Babcock and Wilcox boilers should have all the mountings attached to the boiler for safe operation. And there is also one superheater. Superheater is the arrangement to produce superheated steam uh, which was not used in a Cochrane boiler but in a Babcock and Wilcox boiler a superheater is used to produce superheated steam. This is the superheater. Wet steam is collected and that is passed to one header through one pipe and after that there are series of tubes and which get heat from the furnace or combustion chamber and is collected in another header and this steam 
is then taken away to the turbine or to the required place through this steam stop valve. Now let us discuss about the working of a Babcock and Wilcox boiler. So let's start with burning up the coal. Coal is fed to the grate through the fire door. Through this fire door, these coals are fed. The combustion gas expands and moves upward and pass across the water tubes. So the combustion gases passes across the water tubes. The baffle plates deflects the flow of gas and therefore the flue gases travel in a zigzag way across the water tubes and the superheater. The exhaust gas leaves the boiler and enters the smoke box to be discharged to the atmosphere through the chimney. This hot gases passes like this then due to the presence of the baffles it again comes down and it goes up again and ultimately it will come down and it will enter into the smoke box and then through the chimney it will be discharged to the atmosphere. Now the tubes just above the furnace that means these tubes above the furnace receive more heat and temperature is slightly more than the rest of the tubes. Being heated first and getting lighter, that means lower density, the water goes up to the drum through the uptake header. So the water is converted to steam and it goes up to the drum through the uptake header. The water from the drum comes down through the downtake header and the water comes down through the downtake header and it passes through these water tubes and occupies the vacated place above the furnace. Thus, a convective current is established and the inclination of the tubes which is about 15 degree helps the flow of water of different densities and this type of continuous circulation of water is known as natural circulation. So this way the steam goes to the drum and the water comes down to the down deck header and it goes like this. So this is the circuit or convective current. The steam pump is collected in the drum above the water surface. This is the surface uh, space where the steam is collected. The steam is collected from the steam space through the anti-priming pipe. This is the anti-priming pipe and the steam is collected and it comes down to the superheater and this is one header and from this header it goes through many tubes or series of tubes to another header and by this time the steam becomes superheated and this superheated steam is sent to the turbine or the required place through this steam stop valve. So this way the waste steam is heated by a superheater. That means superheater is an additional arrangement which is combination of many tubes and it is heated by the hot gases inside the combustion chamber. The steam absorbs more heat from the flue gases and becomes superheated. The superheated steam passes through the steam stop valve at the top of the drum. At the lowest point of the boiler, the mud and sediments are collected. This is the lowest point of the boiler so far as water is concerned. So this mud box collects the mud or sediments which is blown out through the blow of cock. So from this there will be one additional cock for blowing off of the mud and sediments and it is done periodically. All the mountings like 
स्टेम स्टॉप वाल्व सेफ्टी वाल्व वाटर गॉज प्रेशर गॉज फीड चेक वाल्व फ्यूजेबल प्लग एक्सेट्रा आर एटैच टू द बॉयलर फॉर सेफ ऑपरेशन सर दिस इज प्रेशर गॉज दिस इज वाटर इंडिकेटर दिस इज द स्टेम स्टॉप वाल्व देर विल बी वन मैन होल ऑल्सो दिस इज द ब्लो ऑफ कॉक सो दिस वे बैक कॉक एंड उल कॉक स्पॉयलर वर्कस इन हुई द वाटर पास इज थ्रू द ट्यूब्स एंड दिस ट्यूब्स आर हीटेड बाई द कम्बसन गैसेस एंड दे आर टू हेटर्स वन इज डाउन टेक हेटर वन इज अप टेक हेटर द स्टीम गोज टू द ड्रम थ्रू द अप टेक हेटर हुई इज कनेक्टेड बाई ए शॉर्ट पाइप एंड वाटर कम्स डाउन टू द डाउन टेक हेटर एंड थ्रो एन हेटर पाइप हुई इज लॉन्गर दैन द शॉर्ट पाइप this way the convective current or natural circulation is established within the boiler the angle of inclination of the tubes which is about 15 degree is very essential for this convective current to be more effective without any obstruction now let us understand more clearly how a Babcock and Wilcox boiler works, or what is the working principle of the Babcock and Wilcox boiler with the help of a 3D model.